Hello you guys, uh, Ben back here, um, doing the tutorial series again, but this time for the Airbus, um, for the Aerosoft Airbus, um, I, I don't own the expansion for the A318, A319, I only own the A320, A321, however, um, most of what I'm showing in this video should be transferable between all of the variants, so just keep that in mind that this isn't specific to one particular model. Um, as far as the pre-flight, which is what I'm going to do in this video, similar to my NGX series part one, we'll cover the pre-flight planning. Um, as far as this goes, right, <coughs> uh, there is little that I need to show you that's any different than the NGX, so for that reason I'm very quickly going to skim over it, but I'm not going to go anywhere near as in, as in depth. If you're not sure of what I'm saying or you feel like I'm going a bit quickly, I'm actually going to put the link to the NGX part one where I'm much more thorough and in-depth so you can get an idea. Most of it's going to be similar. There are a few parts that are different which I will cover in, de uh, in detail, but um, uh, the, as far as this flight aware and so forth, it, it's quite similar. So, uh, much like with the uh <coughs> NGX uh, pre-flight planning, you're going to go to flight aware and you're going to look up your route. For uh, the NGX series, we went Las Vegas to Los Angeles. We're going to go the other way. Uh, for for the Airbus series, so we're going to go from Los Angeles to Las Vegas. You'll look up uh, all these uh, various flights. You'll have a bunch of routings, and you'll want to find one that fits the aircraft that you're going to be taking, of course. So look for an A320. You can see here's one uh, Virgin America 474 uh, is an A320 that we could take. So uh, it departs at 9 a.m. So you'll click that flight, and then as you did with. Um, with the uh, in the NGX tutorial series, write down whatever information from here that you want. So I'm going to write down the departure gate, which is Terminal 3, uh, Gate 37, Bravo, and I'll write down the arrival gate, which is Terminal 3, Echo 9. Um, you can write down your flight level, which is flight level 290. You can jot that down. Um, you obviously take your routing here, which is the Loop 7 Departure, Daggett Transition, Kepik 3 Arrival, so make note of your routing, and uh, I'll copy that. Um, and then make note of the departure time, which is 9.15 a.m., so you should be on the ground around, uh, or scheduled is actually 9 a.m., my apologies, and you should probably be on the ground then around 8.30. Make note of all of that. Um, other, uh, this is entirely similar. Then, you know, come to f uh, Sky Vector entirely similar to the NGX series I should say. Then come to Sky Vector and look up your aircraft or airport rather for each you know you have two tabs here and pull open your charts uh, for you know scroll down to the bottom here and you'll be able to find your charts. Uh, Los Angeles departure charts it's the loop 7 so open your loop 7 chart which is here familiarize yourself with it understand the departure since you'll need to know that when you uh, are departing and then do the same for Vegas except open your arrival which uh, is the Kepic 3 or Kpec 3 uh, and open that up and, and take a good look at it uh, get comfortable with it, get familiar with it and uh, be ready to fly it when you're in the aircraft and then the the METAR of course look up each of your METAR so you know where you'll, where you'll be departing uh, the wind at Los Angeles is 240 at 10 knots, um, so I know we'll be departing to the west off runway 24 uh, left, I believe. And uh, and then do the same for Las Vegas. Look up the weather at Las Vegas, and we can see the wind is 090 at 9 knots, which will m that makes things a little tricky. Um, we could probably... I know they use visual approaches for the 7s, although the 7s are a pain in the ass to land on, so we'll probably not bother with the 7s. Um, the two fives are out of the question because that would be a tailwind. Um, we'll probably land on, we could either take the ones or the one nines, we'll probably land on runway one left. Uh, but we'll monitor the wind when we're in the air. Always good to check the weather multiple times, but just tentatively speaking, looking at this, I'm guessing we're going to land runway one left and we'll have a bit of a crosswind, uh, but nothing too severe. <coughs> Uh, because it's only nine knots. So make note of your weather, same as with the NGX tutorial pre-flight. You know, get familiar with the routing, uh, get the information you need, look at your charts, look at the weather. Here's where it's a little bit different. So if you remember the NGX series, we went straight into PFPX. We're not going to do that. You actually need to get into this Aerosoft Airbus X fuel planner. You can find this in your Aerosoft uh, folder. I it's going to be in this basic mode by default, so switch to the advanced mode. 
and you'll get this other information here. Um, I generally speaking don't touch any of this here. The trip distance, plan, flight level, all that. Don't touch it. Don't worry about it. And if you wanted to fill in information here and add uh, multiple layers, by all means, go ahead. Uh, but for me, this is just unnecessary time spent. What you, the main things you're looking for are your CG, which is your center of gravity. Uh, you need to enter your departure iCal and your arrival iCal, and you need your fuel. So what I do here is I obviously enter the departure and the arrival. So I'll enter uh, Los Angeles, and then I'll enter Las Vegas, or wherever you're flying to and from. And then uh, you can randomize your uh, payload here. So just if you click random, it's going to jump both your passengers and your cargo. I know there's two switches here, but they effectively do both. Uh, the top switch will switch both passengers and cargo. Just jump this around until you get a number that you like. Uh, there is no right or wrong number, whatever you prefer. Um, and I, I should note another thing here, aircraft type. This will show all the aircraft. Obviously select the one that you're flying, which in this case is the A320. So just randomize your passengers and payload until you get a number you like. This looks good, 102 packs, just over 5,500 pounds of cargo. Um, and then adjust your CG here until where it says TWO, takeoff weight, percentage, uh, MAC. This is your center of gravity, this is your balance. Adjust this until that number right here, this percentage, your center of gravity, is green. Uh, you'll see it will turn black there, you don't want that, you want it green and then take any number that you want. Uh, you can go all the way over here, you can keep it in the middle, but you need that number to be green. Once you have it set where you want, once you have your center of gravity adjusted, write that number down, you're going to need it. So 25%, I'll write that down on my scratch pad, you should do the same. And you now know that your uh, center of gravity is 25%, leave that. Next, um, you'll see your zero fuel weight here. 115,435, 115,435 pounds. Now, I'll come into PFPX or whatever your flight planning software is, and you can plan the flight exactly as you did with, uh, <coughs> with the NGX. So put in your airline, we were flying Virgin America, put in the flight number, uh, it's 474 from Los Angeles to Las Vegas. Takeoff runway will be runway 24 left. Landing runway will be runway 1 left. Uh, put that away. You don't need to touch anything else here. Aircraft, select your aircraft. Again, if you have registrations and tail numbers for each and every aircraft in your sim, great. You're doing better than me. Um, but I prefer just to put in the aircraft type and have one entry for all my liveries, for all my aircraft. It keeps things simpler. It's less work. But uh, I'm slightly lazy in that regard. So if you wanted a, a more tightly configured aircraft, that's fine. I just have A320, Boeing 738. We'll select the A320. Put in your flight level, which is 290. And then you're not going to have a step climb by assigning that. You're locked in. It's the only thing you need to do under aircraft. Optimization, leave that as is. Payload. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to go under payload, and you're going to make note of that zero fuel weight that you just saw here. It's 115,435. Type that in here. So 115,435, you need to copy that over. Otherwise, you don't need to touch anything in here. Fuel, take as much or as little as you want. Uh, obviously, our policy is US domestic. We're flying in the US. I always, as I mentioned in the NGX video, like five minutes of extra time, 10 minutes of, 10 minutes of contingency time. And if I'm flying into a busy VATSIM event, I'll take some hold time as well. Copy and paste your route that you just grabbed, Loop 7, Daggett, Kepik 3, or whatever your route is, and build it. And if you want an alternate, you can take one. I know the weather's really good there over on the west coast, so I'm not even going to bother with an alternate. Compute the flight. Uh, if you want to export it, feel free to export it. If you want to send it to VATSIM, go ahead. Uh, you can do that. If you have uh, takeoff performance, by all means, use you know calculate your takeoff performance. Um, <coughs> You don't have to do this, though. Um, generally, what I would do is I just calculate takeoff performance, and it'll give you uh, a setting. The Aerosoft will actually auto compute. So if I come in here, uh, runway 24 left, uh, flaps configuration optimum, just calculate that. I'm using Topcat. If you don't do this, it's fine. If, if you don't have takeoff performance calculator, ignore this. And I'll just see flaps 1, and so I'll just write down flaps 1 and say, that's what we're going to take, and then the, air, uh, the Airbus will auto-compute the rest in the sim. 
Anyway, I hope I didn't confuse you. If, if I did, I, I apologize. Just ignore that. Again, make sure your flight level here is correct. Flight level 290, it is indeed. Make sure your zero fuel weight matches 115, 435. 115, 435, it does. And then you're going to need here your release fuel, which is going to be 11,786 pounds. Come back over to your Airbus fuel planner, and right here in the total pounds, type in whatever your, your flight planning software gives you. So I'm going to type in 11, 7, 86, 80, not 85, 86, and generate that load sheet. You can click it a couple times just to lock it in. Make sure you have auto load with aircraft checked, and so when you go into the sim, you'll automatically be able to grab that. Uh, so that is that is where it's different from the NGX. You need to type in your zero fuel weight given here into PFPX, and then you need to pull your fuel, your release fuel, and put it in here. <coughs> Otherwise, it, it's really quite similar. There's nothing uh, really different about this process of pre-flighting the Airbus than the NGX. There's just a, a couple differences with the, the fuel planner and the load. But otherwise, it's, it's really quite similar. I don't do anything differently. Um, if you wanted to, you could write down your reserve fuel. I wouldn't worry about that. Uh, you don't. There isn't an entry to put that in in the Airbus, as far as I know. There might be, but I, I generally don't do it. Um, again, if, if you're unfamiliar with the charts in FlightAware and what it does, uh, I'll have a link to the NGX Part 1, which will explain that more in depth. But this is this is really the only difference. So... This is the pre-flight. I know it's it's really brief, but there isn't a lot more to it. There's not a lot that's different. So, with this done, um, this will wrap up part one of the video series, the, the pre-flight planning, the tutorial on how to fly the Aerosoft Airbus. And I will see you guys for part two in the flight deck for the cold and dark startup, uh, pushback, uh, taxi, departure, and climb out. So, take care everyone. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.